Welcome to Overcomers International Fellowship. We are a bridge to the future for men that are struggling with all sorts of uh, different issues, physical issues, mental health issues, traumatic brain injuries. They might be struggling with uh, corrections issues, housing issues. And we are a licensed board and lodge facility in St. Cloud. We have 42 residents. We also have a facility in Wilmer, Minnesota. We call that our Timothy and Matthew house, where we house 12 guys, two houses side by side. And we help all of our residents to bridge the gap, to get over all of the different deep things that are in their life and to, so that they can return back into the community and back into society uh, we help them with their med management. Well, first of all, safe, sober housing and stable housing. And that housing is funded by group residential housing through GRH. We have 25 beds here in, uh, in St. Cloud. And then we also provide some transitional housing uh, for people that have got an income and rep payee services in place and are going to school or they're transitioning back into the community. And we also have a five bed um, unit for the Department of Corrections intensive supervised release. So we work with the men, we mentor them, we help them uh, get back into the community by going through their, all of their aftercare programs. They might have uh, through probation or civil commits or through their case managers, They've, they're supposed to be doing some aftercare programming. And so we help uh, arrange, we give them rides back and forth in the community, make sure they attend those groups and bring them back. We do the med management. We help them uh, open up other doors of resources for education. Uh, we have uh, usually two or three of our guys that are going to the Vo Votech College or to the regular college here in St. Cloud. Also, we, we get our, we usually have about one in seven of our men that come through here have, uh, don't have a GED. So we get them out to the GED programs that are available in the community. And then, plus we have our own GED classroom here at the, at the Dream Center so that they can achieve that um, to get that education. We also work with all of the different service learning programs that are in the community. We work with uh, St. Cloud State. Uh, we usually have some interns through criminal justice or through mental health or one of the other programs that are available. And we also work with uh, St. Ben's and St. John's and their service learning students. And sometimes we'll have an intern from there or some of the other community colleges like Rasmussen or St. Cloud School of Business, and then also the Votech. We also work with the medical professional students at St. Cloud State and so many other student organizations that come alongside our men and help them and navigate through the complicated reentry services that they have to go through. And uh, we're just excited about helping uh, these guys and seeing them make a turn as we create this bridge for them from where they were at and into their future. So we're, we're seeing some great success. We've been doing this since 1995. We did homeless shelter stuff for 11 years and then for the past seven years we've been doing, uh, we've been working as a licensed board and lodge and providing those services. Overcomers International Fellowship uh, Dream Center in St. Cloud here, we house 42 residents in a four building complex on, uh, in our main building is 529 16th Avenue North. We call that the Dream Center building over there. And that's it where we have our main offices, our administration. We do most of our programming over there. And, and uh, we house many of the younger men there. All of the rooms are upstairs. There's 14 rooms up there. And then uh, we have the hospitality house that's right behind me here where we have uh, uh, seven units of all people with, uh, with mobility issues. They might have had back injuries, knee replacements, uh, different 
uh, chronic lung problems, different things like that. They can't do any steps. So we house them in our bottom floor. That's all GRH housing. And then uh, upstairs in the hospitality house here, we split that, the upstairs, into our Department of Corrections contract with the, with the uh, Intensive Supervised Release Program. We have five beds there. And then we have our transitional housing. We have another five-bed uh, unit there that those guys are self-pay. Most of them are on Social Security and have rep pay e-services. And they're usually going to school or they're working part-time plus uh, really working a, a program of action, staying sober, and have been with us uh, quite a while and have really proved themselves. And they'll be transitioning from there out into permanent housing. So we have uh, one of the other housing units that we have. We try to do specific housing. We have the young people at the Dream Center, hospitality house. We have mobility issues, transitional housing, Department of Corrections. And then we have a housing unit we call the Caleb House, and that's re right behind me here. That's uh, a six-bedroom unit, and that's set up for the people that have chronic and persistent mental illness. Most of them have schizophrenia and uh, are going to be needing services for a long time. And uh, it's a nice quiet place for them to be. Most of them have social workers and work with their arms workers and work with the other medical, mental health professionals in the community. And it's a very wonderful, uh, stable program for them to be in and for them to become successful. Usually they're going to be there for a, a pretty long time until they get an arms worker and then we eventually find them some uh, supportive housing out in the community. We just added one more housing unit into uh, our resources here in St. Cloud and this is the new Joshua house we just opened in last July on our 18th anniversary. And the Joshua house is set up as a four bedroom unit. We're looking to uh, have adult foster care in there for a specific population for traumatic brain injury. There seems to be such a real need for those services and for that specific population that have got, uh, that have been struggling for years with either undiagnosed TBI and now they're getting the services they need and we can provide the resources and the staffing and get them, getting them out to, to programming and working with all of the other mental health and the TBI specialists in the community. So we're really excited about our new Joshua House. This is a typical room that's uh, at, the, at the Dream Center. All of our residents, we really truly believe in single room occupancy. We feel it's healthier for them. Uh, we provide the TV. They have expanded basic cable. They have their own key. We do do room searches and shakedowns at least once a week and we do test for drugs and alcohol. And it's about the size of a dorm room. It's a single bed dresser, but it's their privacy. It's their place to be. And we feel it's much more healthy than the double bunking and all of the other uh, dormitorial facilities and different things like that. And the guys do very, very well in an individual room that they can call their, temporarily call it uh, their home. One of the services that we provide with our board and lodge services is, is med management. We have a, our nurse comes in and fills up uh, and reorders all of the meds. We advocate for our guys to make sure that they're following through with all of their medical and mental health needs and all of their other treatments. They might be going to anger management, domestic abuse, uh, they might be going to uh, CD uh, programming and aftercare programming. But one of the critical things is to keep them on their medication so they're making the right decisions. So we really spend a lot of time and effort into advocating to make sure that they're, they're, they're getting to their appointments. We transport them back and forth. And then uh, our nurse sets up all of the meds and then the caregivers give out the meds and record them and log all of those, uh, all of their different medications to make sure that they are being med compliant. Uh, and we know that that works the best for all of our residents. So it's, uh, it's a vital 
service that we're providing through the med management and and we pick up the meds we uh, we we take care of all of the uh, the co-pays if they have any to make sure that they stay on their meds and it's been very very helpful and successful for our guys to complete that one of the other services we provide are, are meals three meals a day we have a breakfast lunch and noon and out of these stoves and out of this kitchen we have served over 750,000 meals over the past 18 years. We did uh, the homeless shelter service and community meals for 11 years. And Plus then, we do outreaches and picnics and community meals for the different events and different holidays and we have a great time serving that. It's one of the key things that, that we do is to provide that, that good nutritious meal. And we don't have a cook here. Uh, on staff. We have a kitchen manager, but we always need volunteers to help us out uh, cooking. We have, some of our cooks have been with us for 15 years, 17 years. They have a specific date and a specific uh, day of the, of the week that they come to cook, but we always have openings. We always have an opportunity for people to come and, and to serve and to help us cook. We're providing about 50 meals uh, per uh, so three times a day here and also in Wilmer our you know our cooks are there and providing those great meals too we have our our uh, we have our food pantry that always we always need food donations and we have we always in need of uh, paper products toilet paper paper towels coffee uh, canned goods meats Anything that uh, you can, you would give, we always need those uh, products to uh, to serve our guys here. And uh, how long have you been with us, Mike? Um, let's see, in two weeks, it'll be one year. Wow. Uh, and it's taken that long to get all of the right services in place. But let's go back on your on your journey because we're we're going a little bit back and how you went through this and then what, where you want to go in the future. Oh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I I hit uh, the low of all lows, and I I felt like I know I I realize now that I had just turned away from God, and that uh, the fact of the matter is I was lonesome, and uh, I felt like He was leaving me alone, and I was being punished for something, and where in reality it was me pushing Him away. Um, my mom and dad had trust issues with me, and I know why, because I wasn't very trustworthy. And they can tell um, this time around in my in my uh, rehabilitation, um, they can tell that my actions have changed, and not just talking to hear myself talk. I want to introduce you to some of our staff members that we have. We have a 24-hour, seven days a week staff. Uh, at both locations, both in St. Cloud and Wilmer. And um, Henry really has a heart for the men. Our caregivers are there to help support, mentor, train, equip, and speak into our residents' lives and hold them accountable. All of our men have chores and responsibilities and duties. And so they, we have a, you know, we have a recovery community here so everybody helps each other everybody it tries to be supportive again i feel our job is to redeem heal redeem heal redeem heal love never fails love never fails that's i believe the job of the ministry thank you thank you henry